How do you want to do this then? So just start Sorry. yakking on. Okay, here I am in the closet. I'm very lucky. There's a lot of stuff here. Looking around. Oh. Well, the first thing I see is this. Oh, it's only DVD, which is a shame. But, um, a horse's mouth. Now, I saw this on TV in the UK, and um, it's an incredible movie about an artist. And I think it's John Bratby does all the drawings in, uh, and the artwork in it, and it's Alec Guinness. And it, for me, this is like a kind of a, um, almost like a side-by-side -side piece to something like Lady Killers, which I would have watched um, quite a lot when I was a kid. But I remember taping this probably off, it might have been off Movie Drome, actually, the Alex Cox show. And, um, and I, I loved it a lot. And as I've been walking around the Criterion offices, I saw a poster for it and I thought, God, I love the horse's mouth. I, I hope I run into it in the cupboard. And I have. So that's going, that's number one pick. This is one of my favourite films, Grey Gardens. But I have it, so I'm not going to take it. But, um, yeah, it's such a brilliant movie. And um, Laurie Rose, the DOP, um, that I've shot all my films with, and I will often watch Grey Gardens before making a movie, just to remind ourselves um, how to move the camera as if it's an inquiring eye. Two-lane blacktop, Monty Hellman. Um, this is possibly, I mean, my hand is getting cold by holding this because this is probably the coolest film that's ever been made anywhere. Now, Things to Come was a film I saw when I was a kid and um, saw it on TV not knowing what it was and started watching it just thinking it was a normal war movie and then it slowly became a sci-fi film and it completely freaked me out and I was like, um, I, I, I thought that basically I'd slipped into an alternate reality where this might have happened and I haven't seen it since, I was like um, 12 or something so I'm looking forward to getting back to that, one of the, most, one of the uh, original sci-fi movies. This is one that will make my, my wife, Amy Jump, happy, Fishing with John which is a particular favourite in our house, but we've only seen it on, um, you know, to my shame, on, on slightly crappy YouTube rips. So um, we love this. If you haven't seen it, you should see it immediately. It's one of the funniest things. Seven Samurai, it's one of the greatest action films ever made. And it's also cr Criterion Disc 2, which is going to be quite exciting for my collection at home. How many cupboards have you got? <laughs> I'm over here sometime. Oh, right, OK. Now, speaking of samurais, I'll go for the blind uh, swordsman here. Now, this is one of two um, things that uh, cartoonist Jeff Darrow told me to pick up. And I was chatting to him in Chicago the other day, and he's going, have you seen this, Satoshi? And I was like, oh, damn it, Jeff, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's like embarrassing. He said, you should definitely see it. So now I can. Wow, that's a nice one. That's big. Seconds. This is a brilliant film. And... Uh, Again, I remember seeing this completely blind, not knowing what it was, and uh, being completely spun out by it. And like the kind of, in, just in the first um, 10 minutes of it, uh, that the, the, the plot is so twisty turny, and the use of um, wide angle lenses is just especially brilliant. Yeah, this is like meeting up with an old friend. Hello, seconds. This is one of my favourite films, Sweet Smell of Success. And um, I love it also because it's like a. This is the actual proper um, uh, sister film to um, The Lady Killers. That you know, that you can go from making uh, that McKendricks can go from making Lady Killers to go to making this. So the the quintessen quintessential English film to the quint quintessential American film in in uh, in one um, in one leap. And also, McKendricks wrote one of the greatest books on um, filmmaking. And if you haven't read it, you should read it immediately because it's the only book you need, basically. A slight change of um, pace, Crumb, which I remember seeing at the cinema at the time. Um, I'm a huge fan of Crumb's work, and this documentary is fantastic and kind of tragic as well and sad. But um, I could listen to Crumb's voice all day long and listen to. And he's got a brilliant taste in music as well. I saw Rumblefish when I was a kid, and I only had a black and white TV, so the. the Certain scenes of it were completely lost on me. <laughs> and I remember going to school the next day and going, yeah, rumblefish was brilliant. And they go, yeah, the bit with the goldfish, the rumblefish was amazing. I'm like, no, I don't know, was it? Yeah, so now I'll, finally I'll be able to see it with that tiny bit of uh, colour in it, so that's exciting. When uh, we got a video uh, recorder in our house, the first rental I made was Watership Down and Death Race 2000, um, when there was no... Uh, control over what you could get from video shops at that point at whatever age. Um, Watership Down didn't work, um, but Death Race 2000 did work. 
And I think that's probably um, sums up my whole career, really. Thank you.